All right, so guys, I'm here doing uh, welcome again, and I'm here going to do a video on how to make some of the rare parts for the SO23 camper. Uh, I guess this will end up being a video series, and uh, this is some of the stuff I need to make. Um, these are the these are the uh, sub hatch uh, they oh, they call it latches. Hatch latches and I found some pictures. Here's some that were listed on the Samba uh, You know, they're they want like I know a guy who has a set and if there's three of them He wants 300 bucks for him You know and oh, man, yeah, I just can't see myself You know anting up for that. I mean if I had to pay What it cost for all the original parts? Um, basically, I might as well just buy another camper already done and just drive it so anyway it becomes a challenge to make them and uh, i'm up for a challenge so here's what i've got here uh, to make these things here i'm going to use some flat stainless steel okay this is stainless steel i'll get this remnant from uh from ims metal supply also i have this stainless steel and this is half inch so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that shape, okay, out of this, okay, and then I'm going to take, and if you see there's two tabs on here, I'm going to take the half inch, then I'm going to make two tabs there, then I'm going to take a piece of the half inch flat, cut it into that shape, and then weld a piece of threaded rod on there. Then I have, so these are what these are called. If you want to look up to find something similar to this, it's not going to be exactly the same. Uh, but these are called thumb screw, uh, thumb, thumb nuts. And uh, so I looked up thumb nuts on eBay, and stuff like that. And I found some that don't exactly replicate exactly the same thing. But, you know, it'll be close enough for me. So... You got these things here, and I'll just take this same flat stock here, and I'll cut that shape into it right here, and I'll make this thing, and then this thing will flip down and thumb screw on to hold the lat hatch down. Now there's two of these for the hatch, and then there's one for the for the uh, for the seat. So some of these are some of the things I'm gonna be working on. I don't know if I'll, how much of this stuff I'm gonna get in this video. This here is my table. Uh, for the main table, I got to straighten it out a little bit with the. Uh, I'm not going to be doing that today, probably. Um, I'm going to straighten it out with the planer I got, and then that's my small flip down table. And then what we've got here is we've got stainless steel tube, polished stainless steel tube. Guess what that's for? To hold that up. You know how that thing flips up and down. And then I've got another size of flat stainless tube that fits inside of that stainless tube. So again, these are all remnants from IMS Metal Supply. Okay, so then I have this is my flat steel, flat stainless steel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out circles. Okay, and fold them and that will make the uh, upper and lower support that holds those the posts in that hold up this thing so and then I'll also make the uh, latch uh, that that you squeeze um, with a little spring underneath it uh, out of this stuff I'm thinking I'm not sure maybe I won't make it out of this I'll give it a shot but uh, we'll see how that works when I get there and I might end up making that. Well, no, I have to make it out of something. It has to be made of sheet metal. So, and I've got here. Um, this is antique white um, formica sheeting, and this came from a place in Florida. Uh, I forget what it's called, and it looks very, very similar to the original material that was on it. It's. Uh, so look up antique white uh, formica. They sell it at Home Depot too, the same thing. 
but uh, you have to order it. So I just ordered it directly from these guys. Um, it was something like Formica Supply, some, some supply house in Florida. And they just shipped it out to me. They had free shipping. So I was like, why would I go to Home Depot and have to wait and get it shipped and go do all that and make a special order when I can just go there and it just comes to my house. So we're going to start. I'm going to go ahead and use a... Uh, I'm going to use a, uh, a nibbler and I'm going to cut circles out of here. So we'll check that out and stay tuned. Uh, watch the series of this. We'll talk to you in the next portion. All right. So successfully after 10 minutes of looking, I can remember where it was. Got my nibbler, Harbor Freight one. All right. So noise alert, guys. Headphones. So this thing cuts sheet metal pretty good. Let's hopefully you guys can see that. All right. I'm just gonna guesstimate a circle. Kind of pushing the limits of this. Oh, it doesn't cut a very good circle. It's just, I'm kind of turning it too sharp. Good old bench grinder. Let's take a look at the next step here. All right, so the last time I used a whole, I used a whole uh, cutter, and it didn't work as good. What if I got these on? I could spend a ton of time on that to make it look perfect, but I think we all get the idea. What if I bend it wrong? Then I did all that work and I didn't even make it right. So anyway, let's move over here. Sheet metal bender. I'll cut you guys off. Alright, so you gotta have one of these really. Yeah, stainless steel is always a little harder than regular. So I'm gonna eye all this stuff. I'm just gonna eye it. See how close I can get it. Okay, well, this is actually gonna be the hardest part right here. It's gonna be right there. So I bent it that way. I think I bent it in the wrong place. That's what I say, whenever I measure, I end up getting worse. I don't know about 
you guys. But uh, yeah, maybe I'll straighten that back up if I can. Get a hammer. Alright, so just straighten this back up. Let's give this another shot. I'm going to have to put it about right. right there. It's really hard to figure this in advance. Because this thing won't do the compound bend, so it kind of comes out a little bit weird. And you got to straighten it. Yeah. That looks pretty good. So we ended up with this. That's what I was trying to get right there. Is that half moon shape? If you look at the diagram, and then of course this is gonna fit right in there like that. So I don't know if you guys can see that okay. It's gonna be just like that. And then this is a coating that's on here. I just take that out with my fingernail when I'm all done. And then, so this will be the hinge for the bottom of this pole. So if you look at how they're made, in fact, I think I have it up on the computer. I'll go show you the diagram of what I'm making. All right, so here's the parts I'm gonna make. I'm gonna make this little handle here. And let me see if I can click forward to the bottom. Uh, then this here, I'm gonna get a sign trim cap, it's called. Should match that pretty close. It just has a little bit taller edge on, on this part. These here, I saw some of the dollar store that looked like that. I'll probably get those. So if you see at the bottom, at the bottom down here and at the top, up under here, that's the little half moon thing that I just made. There you go, there's the other side. So you can see that this tube slides on the outside of the one below it, of that tube. I don't know if I can get back to it, of that tube. So that's how those two tubes uh, correspond together. All right, let's go back out of the shop. All right, so you'll see when I peel this off, this is polished on this side. So um, this is basically the same thing as what you saw in the video goes on to that tube like that and what I'm gonna do they had like little like rivets in here now I could use rivets or screws but I'm probably just gonna drill through here and maybe just put a cotter key on there because then it's easily fixable and serviceable if I ever need to work on it What I figured is um, these two poles combined together and the distance needs to be around 22 inches um, and then that's not in, you know you have overlap in there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure to take half of that so 11 inches I'll make a piece 11 inches and I'll cut it right there actually I'm going to start with 13 give myself a couple of extra inches just in case and then you can always cut it off the other end when I get done I'll just use this pipe cutter. I don't know how it'll work, but give it a shot. Uh, ooh, I'll spare you guys the details of that. Oh man, makes a sharp edge though. I'm going to go ahead and hit this the grinder a little bit. Use this finer wheel. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and cut the other tube real quick. I'm going to go ahead and cut that at 17. Let's see how that works out. All right, so we'll just do some cutting here. All right, I'll finish this up. Same old, same old. Noise alert again, guys.
right, so that's all ready. All right, so now that I got these two pieces here. One slides inside the other. So one's going to be, and what I'm going to do, I just figured out, is I'm going to go ahead and make the incision. I'm going to make an incision right here along here. And then with the, uh, with the cutoff wheel, try and make it nice and straight right here. Probably do that in the vise over there. And then, uh, so that this one will slide inside the other. And I'm not going to cut them to length yet. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, figure out how to make this thing work with the latch. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it with that, with that sheet metal, but I'm, not, I'm going to try. I don't know if I'll be able to. It might be too thin. But I'll make that little uh, latch thing that goes here. It just has a little spring underneath it, and then it has two little flaps that flip up right here. And uh, so I'm going to make an incision this way, make one here, one there. Okay, and then I'll make it so that those parts will kind of flap up so that they'll ha you know so that that other piece will have a part to bite on and then there's a little pin on the end of it it's actually a little piece of sheet metal but I'll probably have to put a pin on it that goes into a hole that goes all the way through both of these so that locks it in place so when it goes up it'll be spring loaded and it'll come up and it'll lock in that little hole so that's kind of how they work now I know this is too long that's okay because what I can do is I'll go ahead and mount I believe this end will be okay this far end will be okay I'll go ahead and mount that in and then what I'll do is I'll shorten this um, as needed so that it locks up the level so anyway I'll do that at the very end all right so we'll go ahead and put this in the vise here kind of not too tight I don't want to crimp it I'll put an incision right in here and then that will hold there then it has the little thing down below so maybe right in there let's take a look here right so again noise alert guys we're gonna be headphones beware Alright, so it looks like this here. You guys can see that. I'm going to peel this up, peel that up. That'll be my hinge carrier. Let me do that. I'm going to go ahead and put you guys hold on for a second. Nothing like a pair of duckbill pliers. Let's see how this works. See, these, these kind of pliers I'll show you in a second. These kind of pliers are the open and closed flat. Okay, so they don't have jaws in them that move like a lot of pliers. So these are called duckbill pliers, and uh, they work really good for straining something like this. I'm taking that round piece and I'm squaring it off by doing this. So I can straighten that out too. All right, so what I need to do now, it looks like I need to take these ears off and take those ears off and hopefully this will work. I think so. What do you guys think? Think it'll work? Let's give it a shot. I don't know. Never made something like this before. So, let's give it a shot. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and lop off those two ears. I'll let you guys, uh, I'll come back into the video in a second, show you what, you did, what I did. 
probably in hindsight, I probably could have made this cut a little bit shorter, uh, a little bit shorter here, um, and just made it so it just came up to just touch that because these little ear things are going to get in the way. I can tell, but um, we'll see how it works. Maybe it'll work just fine the way it is. As long as I can put a pin through here, um, I'll drill two holes, one on each side here, and then uh, I can put a pin through. I'll use a cotter pin, same thing. And then I'll make it so you have a little button here, and then there'll be on the other side of the lever, there'll be a little pin that goes in a hole over on that end. Well, making the lever is gonna be a little bit hard. Um, I don't know if we'll get that all in this video, probably not, but at least we'll get this much of it and then you guys can see what to do. So I've got the pie here. Let me maybe back you guys up a little bit. All right, how's that? Maybe we get you guys a little bit better. Okay, um, so I'm gonna, I, I usually have a drill, I usually use a drill press for this. I'm gonna try this without it, um, but because my drill press is actually in a very hot area of the shop right now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and see if the vise does the job. I don't know how else to do it. Probably should punch it too. Especially in the stainless, it's always a little harder to drill than the regular. So much easier with the drill press. Tell you what, that stainless is hard stuff. My good bits too, they're in the other part of the shop, so. Well, I don't know if I want to do this right now. I may have to uh, wait till I get the, get it, want to go outside. It's just over 100 degrees right now, so I don't want to get out there. But uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and drill this and put it through so that this part's facing, let's see, like that. So it's facing the way it was in the picture. Then I can take this sheet metal and try and make the handle. Um, i got to figure out a pattern for that. Let me come back into that in a minute. All right, so this is what we ended up with here. So it's like a little pie thing. You, uh, and I just put it on with a cutter key. It's easy. Uh, you know, you could use whatever you wanted. If you wanted to use like a screw or if you wanted to use the rivet, you know, just the idea. Uh, it just depends on how much time you want to spend on it. I don't want to spend that much time. So then I'm going to make this little latch here. And again, we'll take a look at that whole thing together. You see, again, this thing slides inside the other, like so. There'll be a hole drilled right about here, and you'll be able to push on this lever, and the lever will go from about, about here to about there. It's about like it was on the uh, original one. And uh, you'll be able to push here, and there'll be a little spring that's under here that will hold it from coming up. So what I'll probably do here is I'll probably put a little, a little tab right here, you know, cut a triangle. I think that's how they did it. Cut two angles and then bend that piece straight up so that the spring will stay on there. And then uh, then you'll have your thing slide in there. So uh, that's how we'll do it. I just got to make the handle first. The trickiest part is going to be making that handle and then I got to drill a hole through here and then I'll put the same end. Hang on a second. So then when I finally get the height right, um, this will go on the bottom. So if you look here, you see it goes like that. It goes from like this 
down to having this little pie shaped thing which is very similar to what was on the original one. So I should be able to get this done here. It won't take me that much more. Um, making the handle part is going to be a little more difficult. Maybe we'll put that in another video. Um, but this gives you the idea if you're trying to make one yourself. Uh, it's really not that hard to do. Um, so again, I, I, all I got to do is cut a little triangle. Uh, just uh, two cuts. One here, one there. Like the, a little point. And then just bend that point straight up. So the spring can stay on there. That'll use that. That'll that's what I'll use to hold the spring in place. And then the pin will go through the same way. I'll just put a cotter key on it like that. Maybe a smaller one. And uh, you'll just be able to push the button. All right. So I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe. All right. So let's take a look at what I came up with here. Um, so I just started playing around with this uh, metal piece here, and uh, I haven't even got it attached yet but you can kind of see what I made um, I made this little shape here and then I made it so that this little end I'm gonna actually weld these corners together with a TIG welder hopefully I can do it without burning through it I don't know if this is really thin metal but um, I can probably do it and then uh, then I'm gonna put this in here like that Okay, I'm probably going to reshape this edge a little bit right here where my thumb is. Maybe along here a little bit, a little bit more once I welded it and uh, make it look a little bit more like the one in the, in, the, in the video. And then you can see here what I did is I just made a little point. Okay, then what I'll do is I'll put a spring on that and then I'll put this in place. So if I get a tight enough spring... I get my Harbor Freight Tools uh, spring assortment. Try and find one that's uh, about the right height. Maybe I'll have to cut one. I'll cut this end of it, not the end that goes on the little point. And, uh, uh, and I'll just put it on here with a lot of spring tension so that it'll push. It'll have a cotter key through here. It'll push this thing into the groove. I'll cut a groove in the other piece. And so that when, when I pull it up, it'll snap in place. So that's my goal. It should work out. Um, just a little bit about uh, how you can do that if you're going to make one of these yourself. All right, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe.